Okay. Hi, everyone. Thanks you. Thank you for joining us tonight. Um, happy to be celebrating a few days now without masks. That's a huge hurdle for us. Uh, I'm going to move quickly through my agenda items. Um, but it's important to listen, though, because there's a lot of spring programming that's coming on, which is really exciting. Um, but there's a lot of information to impart. And so um, just just give a listen. I will follow it all up with emails with the specific dates. But um, there's some some good stuff coming down the pike. Um, then we'll hear from our PTA president, Jen Heathwood, and then um, from Dr. Ketke and Dr. Wilson about our math um, curriculum. And I just want to start off with one reminder. Um, tonight's discussion is meant to be a productive dialogue. Um, let's just all be aware of our tone and keep it um, collaborative and keep it content. So let me just make sure everyone's muted. Just if everyone can make sure they're muted, that would be great. Okay. Thanks. Um, okay, so I'm going to start off with a um, an update from the foundation. Um, the applications for the foundation's 2022 spring grant cycle were due at the end of February, and they've received a broad array of, array of requests. Um, they're reviewing their grant proposals, and they'll be meeting soon. Um, many thanks to everyone who supported the foundation's community drive this year. For those of you who have not yet donated. Uh, a follow-up letter just went out in early March. Um, we hope you consider making a gift. Um, our goal is 100% participation from school families. And how you can find that is on um, www.bronxvilleschoolfoundation.org um, forward slash um, donate. So that'll all be sent around too, but just keep in mind the foundation. It's a wonderful part of our school um, and, and it makes possible so many of the different extracurricular activities that we, we have, uh, as well as continuing at it for our teachers. Uh, the Art Council has been working hard. Uh, Justine McInerney, Lyndall Vermette, and Bridget Lockwood, uh, they've been met, meeting with their committee and they're going to have spring into the arts. Um, and that will start March 25th through March 27th. And there'll be an art installation scavenger hunt around town. Um, and that's hosted by the Bronxville Chamber of Commerce and local shops. And then there'll be a reception for parents that will take place on the evening of March 27th. Um, then um, the middle school musical is back and it's been approved by Dr. Wilson. Thanks, Dr. Wilson. And it's gonna be resumed and stay tuned for dates, but they're working on that, um, but that's exciting. And then um, a spring arts festival is being planned for May 17th uh, with a school art show. It'll be several days of art related activity, a large scale outdoor public installation, early evening festival, of culinary arts, food trucks, picnics near the public arts installation, followed by viewing of the student art show in the schoolhouse. Um, there'll be a meet the masterpiece experience. Uh, that's an installation in the school building to introduce students to the great works of art. There'll be outdoor art performances by students, musical, dance, theater, and fine arts talents will be on display during the festival. Um, and then there'll be new Bronxville Arts merch uh, available for purchase, t-shirts, long sleeve t-shirts, car magnets, hoodies, the whole shebang. Um, and that'll all be available at the festival. Um, then there'll be an evening panel of visiting art professionals who'll gather in the auditorium for an interactive discussion with students to introduce and examine careers in the arts. So there'll be professionals and leaders in, in many different fields of art, architecture, theater, fashion, Broadway, dance, and they'll present their career paths and best practices for achieving success in their chosen fields. Um, so thank you everyone for working on that. Um, sounds like we're off to the races. Um, not to be outdone by Memorial Day festivities, the county fair, um, save the date, May 27th. Um, there'll be rides and food and all the excitement that Memorial Day brings. They are in need of two co-chairs for the adult uh, raffle subcommittee. This whole thing is being run by Karina Wiley and Lindsay Lavornia. So thank you for doing that. I know it's a ton of work, um, but it's so fun for our community and for our kids. But there'll be two co-chairs that they're looking for for the adult raffle subcommittee. So if you have um, some available time, please, please come out and participate. I'll follow up with, um, with how to contact them. Um, but they'll be looking for volunteers. And um, that is it for me. Um, I'm going to turn it over to Jen Heathwood. Um, Jen, are you on here tonight? She's going to talk Hi. about... Hi. Hi. Thank you. 
Yeah. Hi, everybody. I'm Jen Heathwood. I'm the PTA president this year, and I wanted to invite you all to come to our all school PTA meeting. It's going to be on March 31st. Please mark your calendars. Um, we're really excited about it. As, as you may know, the PTA executive board meets six times a year, but last year um, we decided to have one time a year meeting where we could bring everybody, all our members together. And um, this is a little different because we're gonna be in person. We're gonna be at the Bronxville Field Club and we will have a meeting there, which will be informative and hopefully not too long. And then after that, we'll all get to have um, a drink and socialize together. Um, and that's for K through 12. So it, I think it's got a really great opportunity for all of us to come together. Um, and then secondly, I wanted to um, talk about next year and a call for nominations. So we're already starting to talk about our executive board and councils and committees for next year. And um, my PTA elect, um, president elect who will be president next year is Amy Krause. So I wanted to introduce her and welcome her and give her a few minutes to talk about plans for next year. Amy? Thanks, Jen. Hi, everybody. If you're interested in being involved with the PTA, we're currently looking for volunteers to fill roles for next year. There's a link up on our webpage where you can indicate areas of interest and see roles and responsibilities. In addition, please reach out to current volunteers or me or Caroline or Jen. If you have any questions about how to get involved, we'll be happy to get back to you as we begin to gather and assemble our volunteers for next year. I'd be honored to work with any and all of you and hope you'll consider giving your time and joining us as we plan a really fun and connected 2022-2023 school year. Thanks, Caroline. Thank you, guys. Appreciate it. Um, okay, I think is, is there anywhere else? I think I think that's it on the agenda for the agenda. Um, sorry, I ran through my stuff really fast. I just want to make sure we have um, the most amount of time available for the people we want to hear from. So, um, Dr. Ketke, um, are you able to start now? Yes, happy to. Thank you. I'm not sure who the host is, but if they can enable screen sharing for me, that would be great. Your co-host now. Okay, so thank you for the kind invitation to be here with you this evening and talk a little bit about middle school math. Um, I'm going to share with you the current structure in, of middle school math and then talk to you a little bit about what happens when your children go to high school, uh, as well as share a few other pieces of data with you, which I think um, you will appreciate hearing about. All of the things that I'm mentioning tonight were part of a very lengthy communication I put together for middle school math that was sent out to the entire middle school as well as fifth grade families for the future. Um, so if you do have access to that, you can also review that. Uh, and then I'm happy to take questions. So currently our middle school math program looks like this in sixth grade we offer a heterogeneously grouped math class where some students are learning, or all students are in fact learning sixth grade math. And some students have elected to do additional math standards which align with seventh grade math. And this would be those students who are doing 6H work. Um, the, the class is differentiated, meaning that all students are taught sixth grade math standards and then the students who are electing to do the advanced work are, are instructed in advanced level standards. And those students are also often get differentiated homework and differentiated assessment. 
Part of the bigger picture here in middle school math relates to Algebra 1. We have offered an Algebra 1 Regents course, Regents course for a few years now. This year's seniors were actually the first students to be given the opportunity to take a full algebra, year of algebra as eighth graders that culminated in the New York State Regents assessment. And um, what we really wanted to do here was open up access for as many students as were capable of doing so to take algebra and complete algebra before entering high school. And the reason that that is an important goal is if you don't take algebra as an eighth grader, the likelihood that you are gonna end up in advanced placement, either A, B, or B, C calculus is somewhat limited. And we felt by having a heavily tracked middle school math program, we were making decisions very early for kids as to whether they would have access to those advanced placement courses as a senior. And so we made the decision to allow any student who really wanted to, to take algebra as an eighth grader. And because of that decision, more students needed access to math 7H and math 6H, which in total is attempting to finish three years of math in two years. So that is sort of the long range uh, goal for the middle school program. This year, we do have a separate 7H section and a math seven. Ne next year, all students who have elected to participate in 6H will move to math 7H and then to algebra. If you are currently in math seven and you are interested in algebra, you're asked to meet with Dr. Wilson and talk about you know, potent the potential of some work you may have missed related to 7H before going to algebra. But the overall goal here is to really have as many students participate and take algebra as possible in our middle school before getting into high school. It's important to note that even when the math program was heavily tracked in middle school, meaning we did not have open enrollment, um, most of the students were actually participating in 6H, 7H, and Algebra 1 anyway. Um, so it's not as if we've gone from 20 students in the middle school doing this in any one particular grade to 75 students. We've probably added about 20 students by moving to an open enrollment model. So that is how uh, the middle school math program is currently structured. Moving on to high school, so what happens after you finish uh, algebra as an eighth grader? When you finish algebra as an eighth grader, there are three options. One, if it didn't go particularly well in algebra uh, as an eighth grader, you have the opportunity to repeat it. And if you repeat algebra as an eighth grader, you will have an opportunity to end up in a calculus course. It is not an advanced placement college board course, but we do offer a calculus honors course that is non-AP. Um, and you know, it's important to note also that what you what the grade you receive as an eighth grader in algebra would be your first grade on the high school transcript because it is a high school course. And there may be some students who don't want that to be their grade, first grade in high school, so they may also elect to repeat. Um, if you are happy with your course grade and you do well in algebra as an eighth grader, uh, we will take your academic record, which includes your four quarter grades, as well as your Regents exam. And the math department makes the decision about whether you go to a ge geometry honors course or a geotrig accelerated course. Those students who move on to the geotrig accelerated course will culminate in BC calculus most likely. And those students who take geometry honors will culminate in an AP calculus AB course most likely. Uh, again, this is not open enrollment. So at this point, we are making recommendations that are firm to families uh, in terms of which course is the most appropriate. And the information that is included is grades uh, and region scores. And any math teacher on this call can attest to the fact that there is a very elaborate spreadsheet uh, that goes into that process. 
The people involved in that process are middle school math teachers, as well as high school math teachers, as well as myself, Dr. Wilson, and Ann Meyer, the high school principal. Okay, I wanted to just sort of illuminate how exactly we do the, how 6-H and 7-H will culminate in three years of math in two years, allowing for eighth graders to be freed up to do a traditional algebra course. Um, we had met as a, as a group, the math department, and really thought about all the standards for math six, math seven, and even math eight and thought about which were the most important. Uh, and we prioritized a lot of standards. In many cases, you know, we prioritized most of the standards, but we did feel that some standards were repeated, were unnecessary, uh, and, you know, we could kind of narrow it down to what was prioritized. This is a strand of mathematics that encompasses the middle school math standards, expressions and equations inequalities. So if you look here, you see all the sixth grade standards in math six, and then 6H would be all those standards plus, and you're now looking at some seventh grade standards. Math seven, these are all the standards for seventh grade under this strand. 7-H does all those standards plus additional ones. Two of those there include eighth grade. And then of course, uh, eighth grade focuses on the eighth grade standards. So we, we have a plan that's very solid in place in terms of what the additional standards will need to be covered in 6-H and 7-H in order to get those power priority standards accomplished over the course of two years. Um, just a note about how our eighth graders are doing in algebra currently. This was uh, last year's numbers. And, um, you know, as you can see here, level five is the highest level of performance you can score on a region. So we had nearly 86% of our students uh, scoring in that category and as you know, small as 13% scoring at the next highest level, level four. So the majority of our eighth graders are meeting or exceeding um, algebra region standards. And you know, therefore it seemed appropriate to say, gee, if we could have more kids have this opportunity, which is a very important gateway opportunity for high school, even if it meant a few more fours, you know, we're comfortable with that. Uh, because most importantly, that students can do the algebra as eighth graders who can do it successfully have more options for advanced math in high school. And knowing, you know, you're all parents of middle school students and you know that they're maturing and they're changing and they're becoming more, um, you know, serious about their studies. And this time is really important for them to be, be more flexible in our thinking. Uh, for later access. So I, this is also, you know, a, a look over the last 10 years in terms of how many students in our senior class were participating in either A, B, or B, C calculus. And if you look in 2011, 2012, we had about 39% of our students doing that. And this last year, this, this current senior class, which is the first class to have access to algebra as an eighth grader, we have 66%. Um, when I look at this information, you know, the BC, this, the amount of students who participate in BC is fairly similar over the years. And, you know, I will say BC calculus is for certain kids. Many of those kids want to go into hard engineering majors computer science, um, all of that kind of thing. Uh, but if you look at this number of students in AB, I mean, we've even gone up 10% over the last year. And those numbers have nearly doubled since 2011. I would add that our five-year average on advanced placement scores in math for AB calculus is a 3.7 out of five. And for BC calculus, it's a 4.2 out of five. So in other words, 
we have increased the number of students participating in advanced placement cal calculus and our results on those exams have stayed very similar and we do very well on those exams. I would also say, remind you that any student enrolled in an advanced placement course in high school is required to take the AP exam that culminates in the course or they do not receive the advanced placement credit on their high school transcript. So in other words, these are all the kids who are enrolled in that class taking these exams. Uh, it's not just some portion of the students who elect to or, her, who, or her, who are even chosen to. So I think that's all I have to say. I know there are probably a lot of questions um, and I'm happy to take those, but that is all the information I have prepared. Can I explain the difference between A, B and B, C calculus? Uh, that's a good question. <laughs> so they they are, I mean, they if you ask a high school math teacher, they will tell you they are very different courses. Um, so A, B is sort of, it's sort of like level one and B, C is sort of like level two, but you can, you don't need to necessarily take them in that order but there are many advanced topics that BC uh, deals with that are um, more abstract in nature. It, it is uh, understood by math teachers to be a more difficult conceptual form of calculus than AB. I would also add that we have many kids who are prepared to take BC calculus or have the opportunity to take BC calculus but they're also taking many other advanced placement courses in science, in you know, history, in English, and therefore they elect to take the AB because they're not necessarily going to major in engineering or comp sci, and they're you know, making for a rigorous course of study through other opportunities in high school. There's a question about summer work. Tom, I'm gonna let you take that one. Okay, thanks, Mara. Um, that uh, summer work is uh, um, something that that we explored last year um, with um, middling to uh, um, to insufficient result in in uh, the construction of the algebra class for this year. Um, there was a, a significant amount of confusion around it, um, some consternation and some some upsetness by some about um, the amount of time that it took, all of which are uh, um, valid points. Uh, our thinking about this past year, just to reiterate and go through this again, because it does bear repeating, uh, is that our, uh, our concern was that this particular group of eighth graders may have been in a deficit position to start the algebra sequence given the uh, disruptions and the uh, um, the reconfiguration of math classes uh, because of, uh, due to COVID. And um, we felt strongly that um, kids needed the underpinnings of, uh, of the con concepts in math eight and the readiness for algebra one in order to fully compete in, in these classes, uh, the algebra classes this year. Uh, good news, the kids are doing well in algebra this year, very well. Um, by and large, kids are, are uh, accomplishing the goals that, that we've set for them. And um, that's all well and good. However, moving forward, we uh, are not going to require students to take um, to take the, the uh, full battery of, uh, of uh, Khan Academy um, work. We are going to recommend that students uh, do the getting ready for algebra one sequence um, as a precursor to uh, uh, beginning the class, but it is not required. 
it is recommended. And that's not a euphemism for you should, you really have to do it. Um, it's truly a matter of uh, uh, perusing the topics, making sure you're comfortable with the, uh, with the work so that you know uh, uh, as a student uh, that you have comfortability and familiarity with the concepts and uh, we aren't going to make it a, um, we aren't going to make it a, a requirement for a seat in the class. With that in mind, I'd also like to just point out uh, that while we did require kids to do more this summer and we did require it, no one was, uh, um, no one was, what was, told that they couldn't have a seat in class because they didn't complete the work. Every student uh, that uh, wanted to take Algebra One was registered for Algebra One. We did make recommendations, and in some cases, those recommendations were heard but not followed, and that's fine. Some of those kids have done quite well in Algebra One, and some have asked to move to the Math 8 class. That is both, uh, uh, both of those things are normal course of action in any given school year. Um, so the uh, um, to reiterate again, uh, there will be summer work that is given uh, as a uh, um, as a possible uh, refresher or or just bone up before the beginning of the year. It will be Khan Academy's uh, sequence entitled getting ready for algebra one. It will not be collected. It won't be something that we, we ask for students to do, but it will be available uh, if students so choose. Uh, this is a long question. I need to read it for a moment, unless Mara, you've already read it. I have. Um, so, I can tell you that I visit the sixth grade classrooms quite regularly. I can also tell you that they're working uh, on some professional development with IDE on how to best differentiate from what I have observed of those classrooms. The teachers are teaching the content standards related to grade six and the content standards we have selected related to 6H, which are seventh grade standards, very, very thoroughly and very well. Um, why we would want to compress a three-year math curriculum in two years for, uh, to allow for most kids to have the opportunity to take Algebra One uh, if they're not destined to pursue a university degree or career requiring advanced math. Um, you know, we are mo mainly preparing our students to go to four-year colleges if your child is not planning on that, your family does not plan on that, uh, I think then, you know, this is an open enrollment. So this is a family-based decision. And therefore I would say, if that doesn't seem necessary for your particular child, um, you don't have to, you can do the three years of math in three years. Um, but we are uh, like many, many schools in our area that we compete with, um, we are, Many of those schools offer eighth grade eighth graders algebra uh, in mass, and so we wanted to give our students the same opportunity because we most of our families are hoping to culminate in an advanced placement math course as a senior. So I think the Khan Academy. You know, what Tom is suggesting with Khan Academy is that this would be a, a precursor to students enrolled in algebra. As I said, we have a solid plan in place to finish the prioritized standards in grades six, seven, and eight in two years, six H and seven H. They are not being given sheets of paper to do at home. Uh, they are being instructed in the classroom. There was a shift made in January. Uh, by and large, and I presented this at a board meeting, McKinsey did a national study on the effects of unfinished learning with COVID. Uh, and they noted that there was more um, effect in math than there was in reading across the country. 
we were seeing that in some of our data, not necessarily uh, the kinds of dips that we that were seeing nationally, but we did see some of that in um, in our data. So the sixth grade teachers wanted very much to ensure that any things that needed to be retaught from actually fifth grade math. And they wanted to focus on the sixth grade standards at the beginning of the year. And so that was where the energy of the instruction was committed to. Um, therefore, kids who were wanting to do 6-H were being given independent work and often visiting extra help uh, to ensure that they understood that material. But we are we are confident at this point that our that we have closed the gap on some of that and therefore in january we shifted to differentiation of instruction all the research suggests that differentiation of instruction is best practice um, so we move to that to answer the the final question that's been written i i um i don't really think that a parent should be um aware of the differences between the two levels of math, but you should be aware of what your child is bringing home for math. Um, also in the classroom, it shouldn't necessarily be a dramatic shift when the teacher's working with students in 6-H or in, in math six. It, it should be more, uh, uh, more seamless and, and, and likely often more natural than that. Um, we are not, uh, uh, we're not super interested in, in making a uh, big fanfare about the difference between the two levels. And, and also to be very clear, there are times, especially at the beginnings of units uh, of study where the work is the same. And there are times when everyone is getting the same work and that's also uh, reasonable as well. So I see a question here, are they going to be instructed in seventh or eighth, or do they have to take Khan Academy over the, over the summer? So if you're doing 6-H and 7-H, that's what you have to do. There's no additional summer work related to that. If, if that's what the question is, I'm trying to answer that. So what measure or support can students obtain now for those who are not in 7-H currently, I'm assuming, and would like to take algebra next year? It would be our strong recommendation that you uh, um, take a look at the Math 7 um, sequence in a cursory overview format that you uh, also look at, uh, at, not look at, but do the Math 8 uh, curriculum, and then finally look at the um, the out, getting ready for algebra one curriculum. If if that is not required, but we believe that students who have not had um, work in seven H would be better served by uh, by doing that work in advance. Um, the seven the math seven would literally only be a cursory overview, just to make sure you understand the topics. But the math eight and the algebra, getting ready for algebra one would be a very good idea to, um, to look at in depth between now and the time school starts. But um, again, that's a family decision. And then- um, But I just, I just like to be very clear on this point. If you do 6-H and 7-H, you are doing what is necessary to do sixth, seventh, and eighth grade math in three years without summer work. If you do math seven and you want to go to algebra, that is a different scenario. I just want to really hit, hit home on that because I think there has been some confusion about that. And that is the current plan and the plan we are moving forward with. My understanding about Khan Academy um, from a, a, a conference that Roy and I actually attended where uh, Sal Khan was the keynote speaker is that 
Khan Academy is available in, uh, around the globe. Um, it is not a uh, proprietary uh, um, system. It's not, it just requires a login. It doesn't, it's free. Um, it is not required. Uh, con we are recommending if you're in 7H going into Algebra 1, that you look at getting ready for Algebra 1. Make sure that the content and concepts are known to you. If, as Mara suggested, you are trying to make a jump between 7 and, Al and Algebra 1, Math 7 and Algebra 1, that's going to require more work. And um, uh, But none of it is required by the school for participation in the class. Is an AP Math class required to get into a four-year college course? No, not all colleges require an advanced placement math class, no. No, and, and also I think it, it may not be uh, um, particularly uh, uh, clear to parents especially that um, even if you take an AP math class or you take an AB calculus or a BC calculus, if you're in a rigorous program, it's very likely that they're going to ask you to take their version of that course over again anyway. Uh, so it's, it is a precursor to college uh, level work anyway. Um, that's not to say it's not valuable or worth doing or rigorous. It just means that 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 has been the experience of many of our graduates. And I just also I put this in the chat, but to a particular parent, AB calculus is first semester college calculus. BC is first and second semester college calculus. Right. Um, so you can see there that BC goes much further and would be described as Connor will attest to by any math teacher as a, a more rigorous course, but both of them are advanced placement and very rigorous math courses. Can a student who is not currently in six honors be able to take seven honors? The answer to that is yes. We do suggest um, that uh, um, students take the math six honors coursework because we feel it's the best preparation to begin the year in 7-H, but Math 7-H is going to be an open class. Um, I'm so sorry, can we mute that? Sorry. Um, so the, uh, um, the best course of action would be to do as much of the Math 6-H work as possible now. However, uh, we can't underestimate the power and growth over a summer. If a student, is uh, uh, more available to, to do this work in the summer, we would, uh, uh, we would suggest that you look at the math uh, uh, six uh, curriculum in con and, and also the math seven in con as a precursor to attempting 7H. It may be difficult. It is a course that is designed to move quickly. It is not um, there is not a lot of room for reteaching or going over things that, that necessarily were taught in the sequence of 6H. So um, it's possible, it can be done, but, um, but it does, that will require more, uh, more work at home. I have a question that was uh, texted to me that I just want to um, ask you guys. Okay, um, so how do we compare to other districts and how they handle honors classes? Do other districts in the area have um, 6H as a separate class? That's part one of the question. So in, in that memo, I included what several districts do uh, without um, using their names. I would say that the majority of districts do heterogeneously grouped kids in sixth grade. Uh, some have, you know, multiple levels, one or two levels of math in seventh grade. Many have all eighth grade students taking algebra. Um, so that was common to what we saw uh, when we looked at what neighboring districts were doing. 
Um, there is one district who has three levels of math in eighth grade. Um, and, you know, I really have to say that I don't know if I think that's necessary, especially when in ninth grade we're putting kids into geometry honors or geometry uh, trig accelerated, which is a very high level course. So even the school that offers three levels of math in eighth grade, the end game is the same, A, B or B, C calculus. So I think it's, it's relevant to look at what middle schools do, of course, but it's also relevant to look at how does this culminate? What are the, what are, what are the level of rigor of courses offered to seniors who participate? And in that case, we have the same end result. Um, so, you know, I think what we're doing is in line with that. Is Khan Academy the only source of a start to start preparing for eighth grade algebra if a student is not in 7-H? No, it's not. However, it's, um, it's the most accessible, valid, and reliable set of uh, uh, instructional materials that, uh, that we have found that really correlate to the standards that we need kids to be able to function with um, and therefore we, we really strongly suggest that you, um, that you use the Khan Academy materials. Uh, they, are, um, they are well presented. The lessons that, that support the work portions are um, generally very well done. Um, and again, they have the added ability of being, uh, um, being videos. You can stop them, back them up, play them again if you don't get something, stop them, back them up, play it again if you don't get something until you get it. Um, that's a really uh, uh, useful tool to have. I took the entire sequence of, um, of Khan Academy classes uh, all the way uh, through what they offer. And um, I have uh, a lot of respect for what this, uh, um, for what this sequence of math instruction provides our students with, or any students with, uh, if you are willing to take the time and, and uh, do the work, you can learn a lot of math um, and, and learn it very effectively if you follow this sequence and program. I don't have the same confidence or, uh, um, you know, names that drop from, from, uh, 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 drop down that that make me think uh, uh, there are other programs that I can easily say are comparable. There may be, but I don't know them. Okay, uh, thank you. Uh, one more part to the other question. Um, this parent is concerned. Uh, it seems difficult um, for teachers to be teaching an honors curriculum to a general class, and how how is how is that effectively getting done? How are they teaching that an honors curriculum within that kind of class situation? It's a uh, it's a it's a very difficult thing to uh, um, to consider that a class should any class should be taught in one mode with one set of objectives that is a one size fits all. Um, in a math class, this becomes even more apparent. Differentiation of instruction is not something that is reserved for certain courses. It really should be something that is happening in any given class. In, uh, in the construction of the math six sections. Um, math six is, is uh, still dealing with uh, some uh, arithmetic concepts, some elementary concepts, and starting to delve into some pre-algebraic concepts. Uh, differentiation of instruction would have to happen regardless of who was in the class. But the fact that our classes are heterogeneously grouped means that the students who are in the class are receiving different levels of instruction uh, uh, based on that criteria. 
So that's how that's how they're organized. Um, I would also add that you know knowing the standards would help you, I think, to understand how that is done easily. So as an example, a sixth grade math standard is, you know, ident identifying an inequality, being able to write an inequality and graph it. A seventh grade math standard is being able to use an inequality to represent a word problem. Right, so you're teaching all the kids what an inequality is, how to write one, what it means, you know, and how to graph it. And then you would teach some subset of the kids how to recognize, you know, give them example word problems and how inequalities are used to describe those. So there is an alignment through the, the strands of mathematics that naturally define what is taught to all the students and then what is taught to the students electing into the advanced work. So when you think of it that way, I think it's like, for me anyway, it's clear to see how that could be done. Um, our teachers are also trained in how to do, you know, mini lessons where they instruct for 10, 15 minutes and students begin to practice those skills. And then they pull small groups of kids. They pull even sometimes individual kids in the course of a 50 minute period and give them what they need. This happens all the time at the elementary school level um, and, and would happen more in a sixth grade differentiated math class. It happens in algebra one as well. To uh, it, it's not, it it it's not specific or special to math six H. It's just that in that instance we have two different uh, uh, specific classes happening uh, um, in one. Yeah, there are in, kids. In, there are kids in AP calculus who might need to be pulled in a small group during a course of a ninety minute session for reteaching. Yes. Um, not a silly question, Wei Fang, at all. Um, the best way to check that would be to uh, send an email to your uh, child's teacher, and they will absolutely tell you what's happening with their uh, uh, with their work and status. That's uh, uh, a, a very easy thing to do, but um, you can absolutely do that. So someone is saying this is incredibly helpful, but the but can we get a write up about it? I did. I did do an extensive write up. So if you want to reach out to me, I can make sure you get that. It should have come, I believe, through Infinite Campus. Well, um, Mara, how about this? Why don't I include it in Friday and tomorrow's bulletin? Yeah, we can do that again. It's uh, we'll, we'll pretty extensive, it so. I think it'll provide a, a little more insight to what we're saying here. Um, what are the options, three options for ninth grade math? So it would be a repeat of algebra. Uh, it would be algebra for the first time. It would be GOH or GeoTrig Accelerated. And that really is when the tracks diverge as ninth graders. As I mentioned in that chart, if you're taking algebra as a ninth grader, you will most likely end up in a non-AP calculus course. If you are taking GOH, you would end up in a advanced placement AB course. If you are taking GeoTrig Accelerated, you would end up in a advanced placement calculus BC course. So that is where uh, we are doing the placement again, and those are the end results of those particular tracks. We do have sometimes kids and, and you know, the math teachers here know this, who want to try to jump a track even in high school. And we give them, you know, work to, to attempt to do that. And then they get an assessment to see if they have, you know, mastered enough of that material to go, let's say, from an AB track to a BC calculus track, or even from a Calc Honors track to, a, to an AP, uh, AB Calc class. Uh, that happens, but in gen generally speaking, those are the trajectories. Thank you. I have one more that just texted in. Sorry. Um, how are the eighth graders doing who op uh, who opted into the algebra program? The 
um, the cohort of students who are taking Algebra 1 are by and large doing uh, um, predicted, uh, as predicted, quite well. There are some students who uh, um, are already aware that they should use this year as a practice run for Algebra 1 and that they would be um, they would be well advised and have been uh, parents have been advised that they should take this course again in ninth grade, but a very small number uh, um, to be sure. Nobody has uh, um, nobody has has been allowed to continue in algebra one if they are not passing. Um, if that was the case, we helped to make those arrangements in quarter one and and we have everybody in a course of math that is nutritive and valuable. And um, I'm, I'm very pleased about that. And I'm, I'm very uh, thankful to Connor Mitchell, our um, uh, math uh, department chair for middle school and Sarah Zunnenschein, our other algebra teacher who both uh, have worked very closely to keep families informed about uh, progress with Algebra 1, so there are no surprises or unanticipated needs to be considered. They've been very clear with parents throughout. Thank you. What do you think, Caroline? Anybody texting you? <laughs> no, I know. I, it's, it's quieted down. It's cooling off. Cooling no. off, okay. Cooling off, you know, I guess people don't feel comfortable putting it in the chat, it's fine. You know, I, I'll be the speaker here. That's great, <laughs> that's fine. Um, you know, I'm, I really appreciate all the, the kind words here and, and the thank yous, but I also wanna say thank you to the, the parents as well, because, um, you know, this has not been linear or, uh, um, or, or smooth in, in, in some regards. There's, there have been some things that have gone better and some things that have required us to stop and say, we, we can do this better or differently. And um, it's, uh, uh, it's a, uh, we think that we have a, a, a very good uh, uh, trajectory here for our kids. And um, it's based on the learning that we've done over time as well. So thank you to parents and, and to our teachers who have made uh, uh, pivots and, and some shifts that have been very well received and very, uh, um, very useful. And thanks to Mara as well for her helping uh, uh, the, the teachers make uh, uh, noted and notable shifts in, in what they're going to accomplish each year. So the content is clearer and where it is taught is clearer. This whole process has been very valuable for our, our kids and for our kids coming up. So thanks to all of you. I would add um, a, a big thank you to the middle school math teachers. You know, they know the content best uh, and sitting down with them to be able to make these choices and think through how to get this done uh, so that more kids can have access to algebra and therefore more kids can have the opportunity to participate in accelerated math in high school. Uh, they were extremely professional, knowledgeable, and they do a, a, a really nice job with the students. Thank you both. We're, we're lucky to have both of you on board and um, our math uh, curriculum is you know, was really well explained and our team is fantastic. So thank you very much for spending time tonight talking to all of us and for answering all our questions. Um, okay, so I think it's hmm, almost eight o'clock. Um, the chat is filled with gratitude and I think it's time to sign off. All right, thanks everyone. Have a great night, bye-bye.